I'm at a point in my life where I am really struggling in my work. I'm afraid to go to work every day. Okay. What happens for you? Is it the work or is it just anxiety? It's, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I listen to you and Eckhart every morning and every evening on my way to work and on my way home. And it's helpful. But I don't know if, if the task is to move into a different field or try and get a different job. And I think that the answer to that is to practice presence and drop in more deeply. What do you do? Well, in, in terms of my work, mm -hmm. um, I'm a social worker. Uh, mm -hmm. And I wanted to, I never really, I wanted to find some sort of way to make ends meet in a way that felt ethical. So I went to graduate school for social work and I thought, ah, oh, this, you know, it never really felt right, but it was like, okay, I can make money doing something to help people. It seemed to make sense. My family encouraged me to do it, uh, but I find it really stressful and scary and people have incredibly complex problems and I don't know how to fix them. Mm. And I'm so scared to go to work and I show up every day and I do my best and I don't think anybody knows how scared I am. And I get really positive reviews. You know, I put on this, I, yeah. I do a good job, yeah. ostensibly, uh, but inside I'm terrified. Mm -hmm. um, and I hate it, but I don't know what else to do. And um, so you uh, think you have to fix them? That's part of the problem, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Um, and I'm, I'm a behavioral expert. That's my title. I'm not a behavioral expert. Um, and that's scary. There's this dissonance mm. between who I am and what I can offer and what I feel like I'm supposed to be doing. And teams will come to me when, so it's, I work with people with intellectual disabilities who are having behavioral challenges. And so teams come to me as like a, a last, you know, we tried everything else. You're the person that we're consulting. What do we do? I don't know what to do. Um, and it's Is really... it okay not knowing what to do? I didn't know what to do with that couple. <laughs> um. I was just still and what came out, what came out. I have no idea if it hit home for them, but it's n not really my business if it hits home for them. It, it may hit, hit home, home for, for them. In a year, it may yeah. hit home for them two years. Or I may be full of it. <laughs> I need to be with that. That's really hard for me. Uh, and, and a lot of, the, there's, there's also What's hard for you to not know? Not knowing. Ah. And there's a strong ego. So the you know, ego, yeah, it's yeah. A, it's, it's extraordinary. The, yeah. the thoughts that come and the power it has. Okay. I, it, it's so hard to just sit for me. I've been trying for years and it's, it's painful. It's painful to sit? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, it's painful I, physically? Uh, to meditate, to try to, you know, I, emotionally, I can, psychologically. Yeah. yeah. You got to get up. You, oh, you should do your laundry. You should probably think about this. Oh, you should really check Okay. Your, slow down. Sorry. But like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can, I can. All right. So this is where, um, I think the practice for you may be to meditate, to slow yourself down, slow the mind down, and meditation will help with that. To be comfortable with not knowing. So Jesus said, do not worry about what you shall wear, what you shall eat, what you shall say, for in the moment that you need it, it is given. Not two hours before. <laughs> the moment that you need it, it is given. And this is how stillness works. 
This is how spiritual, living the spiritual life works, is that you totally get out of the way. So your work, however you got there, and whether you move or not into a different field, that's just irrelevant right now. Let's just stick with this field. You're there. Because my sense is if you move, you still will have these feelings. Yes, that's why I haven't left. I think they'll follow me. (laughs) Good. Okay, good. So let's work. It's not about the work. It's about your inner state. Yes. So the practice is for you to do a formal sit. Do you do formal sitting meditation? I it's no, easier when it's, I'm in pain. It's easier when I'm suffering. Like when I, I had a, a loss, I could okay. sit. But so now, now I'd can't. like you to commit. Can you commit? Are you willing to commit? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Right. Okay, so your willingness to commit, I would like you to commit every single day to a sitting meditation three times a day. Okay, one of them can be at work. Yes, one of them can be at work. So first thing in the morning, you could even do it while you're laying in bed if you'd like and not get, you know, you can do it lying down. But if you go back to sleep, you might want to set the alarm again. But um, because sometimes it will happen if you're not used to meditating, you will fall asleep. You can fall asleep sitting up too. So I would like you to meditate at least 15 minutes in the morning 15 minutes midday and 15 minutes in the evening before going to bed. And that too could be done in the evening. At least 15 minutes. So even if your body feels like moving, this is where I'd like you to just sit through that sensation of wanting to move. Because right now, your mind is very, very active. So that your movement versus this other woman's movement is quite different, okay? Her movement comes from stillness. Your movement is agitation and wanting to get out of the present moment and (laughs) just go with the thoughts in your head. And, you know, your thoughts in the mind tells you, the ego says, Forget it. I'm not going to sit still. I'm not going to meditate. Whether you're conscious of that or not, but that's that's what's going on. So sit through it. Sit through with the sensation of wanting to move. Watch that sensation of how, oh, that's really interesting. My body wants to move, but I'm willing to sit still. I'm committed to sitting still for 15 minutes. You can go longer. So... The minimum is 15 minutes, three times a day. And then eventually, after committing to the three times a day, still keep going three times a day, then I want you to introduce more times in a day. Not 15 minutes, but say, for example, you take a sip of water. You have a glass or your water bottle. I want you to be present for one sip of water, even one. What does the water actually feel like? Watch your head maybe come out. Watch maybe how you might start, the the saliva starts in your mouth for that thirst. So do something that is everyday things, whether it's taking a sip of water, eating your sandwich, washing a dish. I want you to do something on the practical level with awareness, like as if you're in meditation. And every time that you see yourself, the mind go, and you're aware of it, you may not be aware of it, and it's going, 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 and then suddenly you become aware of it, you go, oh, wow, I've been just like going off in my head again. All right. It's not my sitting meditation time, but I'm willing to take three conscious breaths.
and just to become still, just to become present. <laughs> 